This short video is going to show the basic operation of the normal analyzer and we'll start that off by just seeing exactly which buttons do what and which displays can be shown but before we do that we'll just take a quick look at the two types of models that there are. There's a th three phase model which will just measure three voltages three currents simultaneously and there's a four phase model which will measure obviously four phases but that may be three phase AC plus also a th fourth channel for measuring DC say inside an inverter. Each model has the capability to add a motor option which is shown here. This has six inputs which are basically inputs for speed and torque and with that information you can measure mechanical energy or mechanical power and you can compare that directly with the electrical power to measure efficiency on motors. The inputs to the current inputs as you can see there's two types of connectors for current there's a BNC connector and there's a shunt connector. The shunt takes in current directly up to 10 amps and the voltage input on the BNC can be from a sensor of some, t some sort it could be from a shunt or it could be from a current clamp. Now we'll take a look at the front of the instrument. So this is the Norma 6000. This is the first display that you'll see when you switch the instrument on. Uh, you'll notice that we have blue function keys here and here. These are used for controlling the instrument, changing the display, selecting which items you want to see on the display and what kind of uh, scaling that you need, what kind of setup and so on. So they're the control keys. Then we have the display keys, so that's this group of five here. Uh, we have the first one, which is meter mode, which we're in right now. Uh, then we have the scope mode. And here we can see waveforms and we can select which waveforms you want to see on here by pressing the signal button. We just go back. Next, we can go to trend. Here we see we have channels one, two and three of RMS voltage displayed. We can change that by selecting items here. We can either delete items or we can add items. We can show up to four displays. So we can press add and we can choose, say, current on phase one. We add that. Now go back. Now we're getting the RMS current added. You can see the new trace started to build up on screen. Next, we have the phase diagram. This helps during the setup to make sure that we're connected the right way around. This one's showing why currently. We can also show this is a delta phaser as well. And we can go back to why again. Over this side of the screen, we can see that we have the voltages as digital values. And also we have the currents here as well. And we get the phase angles between each one, each one of those items and then the absolute phase angle down at the bottom, along with the frequency. Next we have the harmonics, and there's a number of modes you can look at the harmonics in. This is the tabula, tabular values, so this is for U2. We can select which harmonic it is that we're looking at. So we can say select channel 1, go back. So now we see that we've got the voltage on phase 1 as the harmonic which is displayed here. So in the table value, we get the harmonic order, the magnitude, percentage, and the phase angle of the harmonic. We can also see this on a spectrum here. This has two modes we can look at this in. We can show the axis is logarithmic, which makes it much easier to view than looking at the linear values. So we'll leave that as log there. We also have a third harmonic mode, which is where we take the FFT. And in this mode, we're looking right up to 100 kilohertz of harmonics. And we can change the display here, show something more reasonable. We're not really going to see any 100 kilohertz harmonics on this load. Now we'll take a look at some of the other buttons that we have here. So the first one here is the save button. So by pressing save, we can save either data, that's all the values, 
or settings that's the way that we have the instrument set up whether we have three phase Y or whether we have single phase or three phase Delta or some other configuration so that's measurements and settings effectively if we hold this for two seconds we start the login process so that will start to capture anything that it's it's measuring into a file which can be downloaded using the software we just go back and we'll go to meter mode so we can see this a bit clearer so the next one is the hold button so when we press hold we've now stopped the measurement at a particular moment in time we just hold those and we can see what all the values look like so to see the other channels we press preview and then we can access the additional pages so this is page 1 of 41 page 40 there's page 2 we see we get things like harmonic values or fundamental values and if we scroll right down we can start to see currents as well we could also configure the display so it showed these things simultaneously so here we have currents see the RMS values so it's a good way to make a quick comparison of values against another but probably the better way is to customize the display to get just the values you want on screen at one time so to customize the display we go back and there we can select user items and this is the display where we can add and change things so for example I will add another value here we'll add a voltage which will just choose the fundamental voltage just for see what happens and now you'll see that we have fundamental voltage on the bottom as well and if you want to add some other items like current for example we could add fundamental current for channel one so go back so there we have six items and we can build this up until we can go as, to as many as 20 items it then becomes a little bit unwieldy so now if you're in the whole mode you can go back into run by pressing this item again so the whole button so now go back so we're updating the display we back in hold and now we can capture the values and look at the current that's associated with the voltage for example so the last thing we'll look at in this video is how to start the logger so start the logger we press save for two seconds and as we do that the function of the f1 2 and 3 keys change so we have three settings there manual logger auto logger and login interval so the first thing that we'll take a look at is logger interval so here we can have uh, two separate types of interval we can have the update rate which is based upon the update of the display or we can choose an interval which is based around hours minutes or seconds um, probably you won't use hours very often but it's there as a setting uh, you may want to use one or two minutes depending upon the type of load that you are actually looking at in this case we'll leave this as just uh, one second uh, if you update if you know what the update rate is it says a thousand milliseconds that actually means um, one second effectively so we can select one so say for example we select this and confirm or we can also move down and use the hit manual interval and we'll leave that as one second there and we'll confirm that's our logger interval so now the next two things we have are the manual logger in the manual logger you simply start the login as soon as you press the button so it's now logging and you can see at the bottom of the screen we have eight seconds of logging done we use an interval of one second we'll just stop that one and it tells us that we've successfully created the file and we'll OK and then we go back to the logger again to see the auto logger so in the auto logger we have either two two choices we have auto start and manual stop or we have auto start and stop you can choose a time and date when you want to start but then you would stop that manually alternatively you can do a, a, a start time and you can stop after a particular duration so for example in this case if we start this now so we confirm we're now logging again 
at, a, at the date and time that was in there by default, which was now. Uh, that could be sometime later. And again, we have the indicator on the bottom line, which indicates how long we're going to, how long we're recording for, and the values that are being stored. So we have currently 21 values uh, because we're looking at one second intervals. So that's the logger. It's uh, then download that data using the Power Analyze software, and it's that simple.